Well, good morning, everybody, from the California State Capitol. My name is Assemblymember Chris Ward from San Diego. I want to thank you for joining us here today to announce new legislation to support uh, victims of online doxing, AB 1979, the Doxing Victims Recourse Act. As hate and extremism has continued to increase in recent years, so has the tactic of doxing, or which is publishing someone's private data for the purpose of targeted harassment. Doxing someone can include highly personal information like phone numbers, home addresses, passwords, medical records, text messages, or other sensitive materials without their permission to exact revenge, embarrass, extort, or exploit victims. Doxing is already a crime in the criminal code, but protections for recourses for victims is silent. Those afflicted are often left to work through the emotional, physical, financial, and other damages on their own without being made whole for the harms that they've endured. Exposing sensitive information through doxing can also put victims at risk of or responding to injury from identity theft, harassment, stalking, physical harm, and even death. Doxing is one of the most extreme forms of privacy invasion and causes significant distress and anxiety for the individuals afflicted. According to the Anti-Defamation League, of those who experienced severe online harassment, like doxing, 65% were hate-based attacks or abuse of people based on their civil protected identity status, such as their religion, their nationality, their gender, or their sexual orientation. The organization also found that women are far more likely than men to be victims of doxing. If AB 1979 is signed into law, victims will be able to pursue damages of up to $30,000 in addition to court costs and attorney's fees. The Doxing Victims Recourse Act will provide deterrence for doxing activity in the first place, but where it happens, it will hold offenders accountable and allow victims of the, uh, for the opportunity to get their lives back on track after a traumatic experience. Now, with that, I'd like to thank several guests that are here with us today. Uh, we have from the Anti-Defamation League, Teresa Drenick, the Deputy Regional Director uh, for the EDL Central Pacific Region. We have Kathy Moling, the Trans Family Support Services and Trans Youth Liberation Executive Director. We have my city attorney from the city of San Diego, Mara Elliott. And right now, I'd like to welcome my joint author, the Assembly Majority Leader, Cecilia Aguirre curry Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Good morning, my name is Cecilia Aguirre Curry. I represent District 4, uh, which just lies west of here of Sacramento. First, I want to say thank you very much to my colleague, Chris Ward, for inviting me to be a joint author on this very important legislation. AB 1979, the Doxing, Doxing Victims Recourse Act, is an important step forward securing justice for some of our most vulnerable people. Doxing has become more common as a tool to intimidate and harass people online. The consequences are devastating. As vice chair of the Women's Caucus, I have been a doxing target. Uh, we have seen a doxing across the state of California. And with advances in technology and the popularity of social me media, doxing has become an even greater threat to our privacy and safety. Anyone impacted by this intimidation and harassment should be able to use our courts to punish those responsible. This bill will send a signal that California will not allow such malicious behavior to continue without consequences. In my district this past fall, we saw members of our community under attack from extreme organizations bent on dividing us as they targeted our LGBTQ kids. Despite their efforts to shame our educators to, for protecting our kids' right to be there, they are. The community came together and took a stand against hate. 
Had we had this bill sooner, people impacted by doxing in my community could have had another important tool to fight back against the emotional, physical, financial, and other damages they endured while protecting themselves and our kids. I am proud of the work that Assemblymember Ward and I have done together to empower some of our most vulnerable community members. And I am proud to be his partner on AB 1979 to provide new adventures of justice for our neighbors and loved ones who become targets of hate. Thank you, Assemblymember Ward. I really appreciate you moving this bill forward. And now we have Teresa. Good morning. My name is Teresa Drenick, and I'm uh, the Deputy Director for the Anti-Defamation League here in Northern California. Founded in 1913 in response to escalating climate of anti-Semitism and bigotry, ADL is now a leading anti-hate organization. And as we strive to fulfill our founding mission to secure justice and fair treatment to all, our goal is a world in which no group and no individual suffers from bias, discrimination, or hate. We're here today to call upon all of our elected leaders in the state to take meaningful action to address the growing threat of doxing. It is no secret that there is an alarming spike in identity-based hate and harassment online. And we know that our policymakers must address this growing trend. According to a ADL study from 2023, 52% of Americans last year experienced some form of hate or harassment online. And I'd like to point out that of those who identified as LGBTQ+, 47% of, of those surveyed um, had experienced hate and harassment online. This is a startling number. And based on ident identity-based harassment, 30% of people from marginalized communities reported to us that they had experienced this type of hate and harassment. And I want to remind us all that these are not just numbers and figures. These are individual people. These are our young people, our teenagers, our friends and our family members who in the privacy of their own home doing what we all do and so being on social media, being in a gaming situation, being on our computers, are experiencing devastating hate. And unfortunately, our laws here in California have not kept up with the hate and harassment online and the consequences that such offenses must take into consideration the serious and lasting offense uh, of efforts um, and effects of this conduct. We so appreciate Assemblymember Ward and Assemblymember Aguiar Curry for their leadership in this issue. Doxing must be codified into California state law so that we can protect the targets of the doxing and hold perpetrators to account for their malicious and reckless actions. We today have the opportunity to take strong and concrete action in addressing this rising threat by passing AB 1979. This bill is an excellent step in the effort to seek justice for doxing victims by empowering them to seek recourse in the civil court of law. It's a legal avenue that holds perpetrators accountable while addressing the threat of doxing and also ensuring, which we always much do, the important protection of First Amendment rights. Thank you. I look forward to any questions in the future, and I'd like to turn it over to Kathy. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today. I stand before you not only as an advocate, but also a survivor of a heinous act that threatened not only my safety, but the safety of my family. My name is Kathy Molig, she, her are my pronouns, and I am the founder and executive director of Trans Family Support Services and Trans Youth Liberation. Thank you. I have committed myself to advocating for the well-being of transgender youth and their families. I found myself a victim of doxing, a malicious act that exposed my personal information to the darkest corners of the internet. Suddenly, my safety was compromised as well as that of my family, and we lived in fear of the unknown. The very work I poured my heart and soul into has made me a target. But I'm not alone in this struggle. 
every day countless of individuals, especially those from marginalized communities like the transgender population, face similar threats to their safety and well-being. The rise of extremism and hate in the United States, individuals are increasingly vulnerable to becoming targets of doxing. The rise of online harassment and dissemination of hateful rhetoric has created a climate of fear that undermines the very fabric of our society. When someone is doxxed, they not only face the effects of those harms, but are left feeling there are little to no resources to hold the offender accountable. That is why I stand here today in support of AB 1979. This legislation is not just a piece of paper. It's a beacon of hope for those who have been silenced by fear. By holding perpetrators of doxing accountable, this bill sends a powerful message that hate and intolerance will not be tolerated in our digital age. But let us not forget the human cost behind these statistics and the legislative battles. My family and I have felt the chilling effects of doxing firsthand. We have experienced sleepless nights, the anxiety, the overwhelming sense of vulnerability. But we refuse to be silenced by fear. Together, we must stand united in the fight against online harassment and discrimination. We must ensure that every individual, regardless of their gender identity or any other protected characteristic, can live free from the threat of doxing and targeted attacks. I urge lawmakers to prioritize the passage of AB 1979 and to listen to the voices of those who have been silenced by fear. Let us come together to create a safer, more inclusive online environment for all individuals. Now I'd like to thank Chris Ward for this amazing work on this bill. Well, thank you, Kathy and Teresa and Cecilia for your comments this morning. As you can see, AB 1979 is a very simple and direct bill, but one that's very important for the legislature to pass. And we're going to do so on the first, on the first step with the Assembly Judiciary Committee this morning, uh, actually this hour uh, at 9 o'clock. Hate has no place in California, and as we've seen actors that are willing to harm neighbors and harm others in the community take to new tactics, we have been thinking of ways to be able to respond. And recognizing that this is already a crime in the criminal code, one that's a little bit more difficult and a little bit of a higher bar, importantly, to be able to prosecute, whether or not somebody is prosecuted, there is no recourse for victims under the civil code, and that's an injustice. These victims are experiencing incredible trauma, incredible harassment, and we deserve a additional deterrence to make sure that these acts are stopping from happening in the first place. And that is really the direct intent and the purpose of AB 1979. So common sense piece of legislation that is really making sure that we are supporting our victims and we are giving them options to be able to make their lives whole. With that, I am proud to take any uh, questions that might uh, have this morning. Uh, and barring no questions, we'd be available for one-on-ones. All right. Well, thank you all for your attention this morning. Wish us luck. We're heading to the Judiciary Committee, and we'll stay in touch on the progress of this bill. Thank you all very much. You're very welcome.